Welcome to A View from the Summit. This is Blake Higginbotham coming to you live from my basement office and studio. I'm going to be sharing an exciting message with you today entitled Kingdom Now and Then Part 2. I will be recapping Part 1 uh, where we covered extensively the term Kingdom of Heaven. But before I do that, I want to encourage you to get your Bibles ready and get out your notepads and a, and a pen that uh, actually will write and uh, take notes, some copious notes, because I believe that this is one of the most important messages of, of this particular generation and day and hour in which we live. And I don't want you to, uh, I don't want you to misinterpret or misquote anything that I'm saying. I want you to be perfectly clear on what I'm saying. Uh, for the most part, as it pertains to eschatology and the end times, we've been sold a bill of goods that is uh, both scripturally inaccurate and uh, certainly not according to understanding. And I, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm taking a position today uh, in the second part of this teaching uh, that uh, might conflict with uh, some of what you've been told and taught as truth, but uh, I don't want you to cast the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, and I don't want you to prematurely judge uh, what I'm saying. If you don't know me, you don't know my heart. If you don't know my heart, you don't know for a fact uh, what I believe to be true. But in essence, I'm going to give you some, some un so I'm going to give you some thoughts to uh, challenge your, your thinking, and I'm going to give you some views to challenge your thinking so that you can move from where you're at into uh, the kingdom and into a much uh, brighter future than what you presently have. Uh, I'm just uh, thankful to uh, be able to, to bring this to you. If uh, I was still doing what I was doing in the past, which I pastored for 15 years, traveled five years before that, and then four or five more years after that, I've been in the ministry a total of 40 years. If I was still doing what I was doing, I would not have been able to uh, record and archive these messages for future generations. But because I am able, I'm going to take the time to do it. Uh, again, the kingdom, the kingdom now and then part two, and uh, I'll give you some instructions at the end that will help you to discover this both in pre-recorded live stream and uh, audio as well as a PDF download where you can have these notes available to you. Uh, I bless you today. Just kick back and uh, enjoy yourself as we as we cover this topic today. The terms Kingdom of Heaven and Kingdom of God are used synonymously and are referenced in relationship to the eternal abode of those who have died in the faith and gone on uh, to their reward. In some cases, uh, they are being used to speak to speak of future events and a utopia that will be established when Jesus returns to set up his kingdom on earth. For the most part, these terms are misunderstood and largely misapplied. With the, with, the, with the many different views of the same topic, I want to try to make some sense of what's being said and try to clear up some of the confusion being generated around this theology. The term Kingdom of Heaven is mentioned 31 times uh, in the New Testament and it's only found in the book of Matthew. And, the, and when it's uttered, it's being uttered by Yahshua the Messiah himself and uh, nobody else is using this term but him and one of the reasons that I believe that that uh, that uh, the book of Matthew was being was basically being addressed to the Jews and uh, the reason that Yahshua used kingdom of heaven is because I want I believe he I honestly believe he wanted them to know uh, the origin of the kingdom and that's what the kingdom of heaven speaks of the origin of the kingdom and where it's coming from and when he when he preached repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand he was basically saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is here if you can hear it he's standing right in the front of, he's standing right in front of you and I'm going to show you the way into the kingdom but uh, they did not uh, that generation uh, is somewhat like this generation uh, they did not uh, they were not able to see him as the Messiah prophesied by the prophets and, uh, and and from the beginning I'm talking about from Genesis through um, Malachi he's being spoken of and prophesied about his coming they could not receive him 
as the as uh, the as the son of, of the son of Yahweh uh, coming as the promised Messiah, and so uh, they expected him to come riding in on a white horse with a sword in hand and overthrow the Roman government and uh, and, and and break the back of tyranny, and he did not do that and because he did not do that but yet chose a different path, a very different path, uh, to represent the kingdom of heaven, and, uh, and in which on many occasions uh, was in direct conflict uh, to the hostile environment of the world systems of that time. Uh, he found himself uh, confronting and in conflict almost every day of his uh, short three-year uh, ministry on earth and, uh, and, and and believe me there was plenty for his disciples to be concerned and nervous about and so we're facing that in this very day and hour so the very small remnant of the Jews that were able to hear him uh, in his earthly ministry as Yahshua the Messiah uh, you know uh, still today we have a large number of people that do not understand who he is and what he has accomplished. But with that, uh, with that all said, uh, his single life testimony and witness has changed the world forever. The kingdom is established, and uh, the kingdom has come. And we must uh, begin to recognize that that his kingdom is established within us individually first, and it does not come with observation. So therefore. We're not waiting to die in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, and we're not waiting for him to return to set up anything because we represent that kingdom. And if you can hear that today, we're going to proceed with, uh, you know, some clarity as to uh, why is it that uh, we have uh, put everything in the past or out in front. And I can tell you that I understand the soul of man and why. Uh, we try to keep everything in the past and uh, why we don't want to uh, bring it into the present. I've said for years that basically uh, the soul of man, uh, you know, the, that the flesh of man is always dwelling in the past and, and trying to drag the past into the present. The soul of man is always uh, dwelling in the future or hoping for something to take place and the spirit of man is always dwelling in the reality of the now. And you know, if if um, if you are someone who's been inundated by uh, the dispensationalist point of view of the pre-trib rapture theory, or premillennial thinking, or uh, just different variations and versions of that eschatology, then the reason that uh, that you don't understand entering the kingdom is because you really don't see it as having come. You see it as something that is going to be established in the future and that uh, it's only going to be established when uh, Jesus returns and, st and, and establishes his kingdom and we rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Well, uh, I hate to tell you this, but uh, for the most part, that's already happened and uh, we are moving towards some things. And we uh, we are we have not yet been transfigured, but we we are moving towards some things, having been translated from the kingdom of darkness over into the kingdom of Yahweh's dear Son, and uh, we are presently being transformed by the renewing of our minds, and we are being changed in the moment. But uh, you need to understand that for the most part, everything you've been taught has already taken place, prophetically and hist and uh, and historically. And so uh, we need to um, we need to be intellectually honest, but we also need to uh, view this in historical context, so uh, so as to get a clear understanding of what uh, is being said. And I can assure you that it's always been about the kingdom. There, there, <clears throat> there is no uh, you know that this this uh, this dispensational teaching that's been out here for years. Uh, especially involving the uh, the premillennial and the pre-trib rapture theory, uh, has probably has probably corrupted more people as it pertains to contaminating them with a false doctrine. And uh, this leaven has leavened the whole loaf for the most part in the American church system. And so uh, I want to set the record straight. I do not embrace those. 
I do not embrace any part of that teaching the way that it's being taught. However, I do believe that uh, that we are yet to come into maturity fruition and begin to see some things that we've never seen in planet Earth since the garden. Uh, if you'll remember, I've already said that I believe that that we're living in a day that's much like the day before the first day or a very dark day where darkness is covering the face of the deep but uh, never fear Yahweh is here and he said let there be light and and I'm telling you that uh, that again as I as I'm saying this I'm hearing let there be light it's that means illumination that also light equals truth and darkness equals falsehood or ignorance and so you need to understand that if you choose to walk in darkness then you will be choosing to be willfully ignorant and you will choose uh, to be deceived and deluded in this hour but I say let there be light let illumination come and let the truth uh, begin to liberate you and to make you freer than you've ever been before as I said, the kingdom of heaven is mentioned 31 times in the New Testament and uh, only in the book of Matthew. And it's, uh, it's always being uttered from the mouth of Yahshua, who basically is saying the kingdom of heaven is likened to. Go read it for yourself in my past notes and listen to the first part of this message because it's powerful. It is, a, it is, it is so powerful, it will change your daily life. Uh, and, and, and you will begin to understand that we are the kingdom of Yahweh and earth. We represent the kingdom of Yahweh and earth and that we represent not only a righteous standard and rallying point and an option, but we represent the legislative arm of truth and justice in this land. And it's up to us to, to be his, to his witness and it's up to us to speak to and it's up to us to do in this hour that which no man has done before we're and i've been saying we're seeing and hearing what no man has heard before and we're going where no one has gone before and uh and it is the conflict of the ages and um it is it is the battle royale the grand finale and uh and it's the kingdom of heaven uh coming to earth which is uh in direct conflict to the systems and government of this world and so uh, those that are uh, that that uh, are propped up pseudo in authority, or those who uh, represent the other side, they are definitely going to get nervous, and they're trying everything, every trick in the book, uh, every ace in the hole. They're playing it all right now to try to gain uh, control of uh, of the earth and of the of the systems that control the people of this world that matrix is collapsing i'm telling you that matrix is collapsing because the light is bringing us into illumination and we're beginning to see and hear and understand some things that we needed to see and understand uh, the term kingdom of god is mentioned 69 times in the new testament only it's not used anywhere else in the scripture Though I do not make a distinction between the old and new for the purpose of teaching this particular doctrine, I want to say to you that the kingdom of, of heaven and of God are alluded to and uh, prophetically and from the very beginning because we see the kingdom of, of, of heaven and kingdom of God established in the garden when Yahweh planted his man and his woman in that garden and, uh, and gave them dominion and told them to 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 replenish the earth multiply and to subdue it and so uh, we see a picture of it but uh, the terms themselves are only found in the newer testament and the newer covenant of the bible we're going to start with mark 1 if you've got your bible don't try to turn to all these scriptures but you can write them down mark 1 verse 14 through 15 now after john was put in prison, Yahshua came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of Yahweh. And your Bible says God, but I, uh, God, the God, the term God does not speak his name, and I want to proclaim his name every time I read a passage of scripture. Uh, listen, now after, now after John was put in prison, Yahshua came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of Yahweh and saying, the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. 
the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand or here. Repent and believe the gospel. So, for the most part, we have not been hearing the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel that was preached to the new believers of the first century. Like I said, we've been hearing a watered down and we've been hearing a diluted version of the gospel and we've been hearing an evangelical version of the gospel. We've been hearing a Pentecostal version of the gospel. We've been hearing a denominational version of the gospel. We've been hearing an inter independent and interdenominational version of the gospel. But we have not been hearing the gospel of the kingdom preached the way this brother is preaching it right here. And so I just want to make sure you understand where we're going. Now listen, John 3 verses 1 says, There was a man... There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Yahshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Yahweh, for no one can do these signs that you do unless Yahweh is with him. Yahshua answered, answered and said unto him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Unless, unless one is born again, he cannot see, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Mark that down. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahshua answered, Most assuredly. <laughs> most assuredly. I, I like verily, verily, but most assuredly means, listen, most assuredly. It's, it is absolute, uh, what I'm going to tell you next, it is, it is the absolute truth. And I listen to what he said. I say to you, unless one is born of, of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Yahweh. Unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. There are some things, even in the natural, that you can't explain, but they are so. You know, you can't, you can't explain, you can't see the air, but it's here, and we're breathing it. And uh, there's a lot of, there's a, if you're going to learn to, to, to live and walk by the Spirit, you're going to have to be able to change course and direction as Holy Spirit directs by His Spirit. If you're going to be governed by Holy Spirit, then you're going to have to learn that uh, His will supersedes your will and uh, His thoughts and His ways transcend far above your thoughts and ways at any given time uh, in your best moment. And you may be smart, you may be intelligent, you may be borderline genius, but let me share something with you. Uh, there's people out here that don't have that high of an IQ and are, are not that educated that are hearing the voice of the Spirit and their lives are being directed and governed by Him. You see, the kingdom of heaven coming to earth uh, and, and, uh, and us receiving, us seeing and receiving that kingdom and uh, that kingdom being established on the inside of us orders our life in the government that uh, that orders heaven and so you got to understand we, our lives have to be governed the way that heaven is governed in order for us to be able to identify with him in this day and hour and if we're, if we're if we're not identifying with him now what makes us think that we're going to identify with him then and so i'm just saying some things just as we go along to kind of help you to understand where we're going Listen to this. This is a blessing. Yahshua told Nicodemus that unless you were born again, you cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. So let's just rule that out. If you're not born again, if you're not genuinely born again, you're not going to be able to see the kingdom of Yahweh. So don't waste your time on people talking about the kingdom and trying to expose them to the kingdom. If they cannot see it, it's because they are not born again. He said also that unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of Yahweh. So let's go ahead and get this straight right now. You need to understand this statement. We must be born again by the Word and the Spirit in order to see and enter the kingdom of Yahweh, period. It's not about praying a little 
uh, popcorn prayer of repentance. It's not about praying a scripture. It's not about shaking a preacher's hand. You have to be born again by the Word and the Spirit in order to see and enter the kingdom of Yahweh. Or, I'm just going to say this to you, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be dwelling in darkness and you're not going to have a clue as to what's going on in planet Earth now or in the future and you're going to uh, you're going to uh, one way or another you're going to walk your life out without really knowing his purpose for your life that's how important this message is the gospel of the kingdom is not just about you being saved and filled with the spirit the gospel of the kingdom is about you coming into sonship and understanding who you are in him and ruling and reigning in life by Yahshua Messiah now and uh, enjoying the privileges of a kingdom citizen in the future as well. And, uh, and also uh, sharing this message with others so that they'll have at least an opportunity to see it for themselves. If, they, if they've been spiritually awakened and if they've been illumined and uh, they are ready uh, to see it and hear it, they will. And they'll be granted the grace to repent based on their faith and their heart's desire and the, and the divine providence of Yahweh and his selection. And uh, you'll begin to see that they will be uh, someone who will lay hold of it and embrace it entirely without problems, without a lot of religious deprogramming going on. They'll just go after it. And so quit worrying about people. Quit worrying about your loved ones getting it. Uh, just represent it and then they'll see something and when they see something then Holy Spirit will amplify that turn it up and expand it to whatever level that they can handle at that time so uh, the and I've said this already I'll say it again if the kingdom is being advanced at all it represents increase so quit measuring uh, what's going on in the earth right now in your personal life by against someone else's and don't measure what's going on in the world by what's happened in the past. Understand that this is our opportunity in this generation and this time to prophesy, to proclaim, to, to speak, to represent the kingdom of Yahweh. And that's what we're going to do. We, what are we doing? I'll be speaking more and more out of the realm of the heavenlies and out of the realm of the spirit. And I'll be speaking more about the kingdom at it than at any time in the, in, in the past um, we were we are we are born again into the kingdom of Yahweh by the word and the spirit we are baptized into the body of Messiah by the spirit that's found in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 read that for yourself we are baptized into the body of Messiah by the spirit 1 Corinthians 12 12 and we are one new man in the corporate son by the blood I said we are we are one new man in the corporate sign by the blood that's found in Ephesians 2 verses 14 through 18. I want to read Galatians 3 and I don't want to run out of time today because it's obvious we're not going to get past <laughs> past we're not going to get very far today but listen Galatians 3 verse 26 says for you are all sons of Yahweh through faith in Messiah Yahshua. For as many of you as were baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Messiah. And if you are Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I've been saying for a while that we're related to Adam in the flesh and we're related to Abraham in the spirit. And so you got to understand something. Our history and our heritage go back to the beginning of the creation and the world that we now know, the world that is. That is the world that we've been given, and that's the world that, uh, that we actually have the right now to uh, operate in dominion and move into dominion. And we have the right to rule and reign. It's been given back to us legally. And we just have not taken advantage of that opportunity. But I'm telling you, that's changing. Uh, there's a vast number of people that are beginning to wake up and uh, from a very long slumber. And they're finding that they're not alone. So they're gaining strength in that understanding. And that they're not going to have to be, uh, they're not going to have to go to the impaling post or be uh, torn asunder 
are to be filleted alive by themselves. If they're going to, give, if any of those things are going to happen, if we're going to have our head cut off, then we're going to at least uh, our heads will roll together. So that kind of adds some uh, that adds some comfort to uh, possibly where this conflict will end uh, in the future, lest Yahweh do it another way. But I can tell you that before you see a true, truly a full manifestation of the kingdom of Yahweh established in this earth, there will be conflict and there will be death. <laughs> there will be a lot of death that takes place because Yahweh is going to absolutely give uh, some people one chance and then there's going to be others that have no more chances. And so, uh, you know, here's your shot. Here's your shot at it. Let's try. Let's to let's band together in the spirit and uh, and quit worrying about how this is going to uh, to sound to someone else. Quit worrying about whether or not your your uh, grandmother or your family is going to be able to receive it. Whether your preacher is going to be able to receive it. Uh, I want to tell you something. That for the most part, the religious system is an apostasy and apostate and a way. And they've turned their back on Yahweh and upon truth. And it's time for you to seek out and find those who uh, are beginning to hear and wake up again. And they're out there by the thousands, by the millions even. And uh, I hope that you're one of them. Matthew 6, verses 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth uh, moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and thieves do not break in and steal for where where your treasure is there your heart will be also now listen to this the lamp of the body is the eye therefore your eye be good the whole body will be full of light if your eye be good the, your whole body will be full of light Remember I talked about let there be light and illumination. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. It, hey, listen. If therefore the, the, the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? We're talking about, remember we're talking about deception and delusion as well. No one can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Yahweh and mammon. Get it, go ahead and go ahead and get this in your spirit today. I'm telling you the reason this country is where it's at, and the reason that most of us in this country are where it's at, is because to some degree we've been controlled by the God of Mammon. And I'm telling you that He is going to absolutely is it, what what it's going to cost. So if you if you just want to know what it's going to cost you to enter into the kingdom, it's going to cost you more than tribulation. It's going to cost you everything you've got. So you might as well go ahead and give it to him now. Amen. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is, life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? I'm asking you, are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to a statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in, the, in, in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Are you listening? Now, now, if Yahweh so clothed the, clothed the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not, not much more clothe you? Thank Yahweh for that. O oh, you of little faith, therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, and, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. Boy, don't we know that to be true, especially in the... In the great land of America for you for your heavenly father knows what you have that you have need of all these things but seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient is the day listen sufficient for the day is its own trouble 
my God. Listen to me. Next time we come together, we'll be discussing how will we know when, uh, how will we know when we're seeing the kingdom of Yahweh? How will we know when we're seeing the kingdom of Yahweh? This is Blake Higginbotham with a view from the summit. I bless you in Yahshua's name. Amen.